So I had jury duty this week. And one thing that comes with jury duty is the opportunity to meet lots of people that you might never meet before. And that sort of goes for you as well. And so I get to introduce myself a lot and say, hey, I'm Christian. I'm a robotics professor. I do robotics research. And when you say that, people will ask you kind of a typical set of questions. And this time there was a Southern gentleman with this, this beautiful Southern accent uh, who asked me, so, not going to do the accent. So, when can I have a robot in my house that does my dishes, takes out the trash, folds my laundry, and does it all for me and walks around my house, does all that stuff? When can I have that? And often you can't answer a question like that, even as an expert in the field, because if it's too far in the future, you just have no idea, right? It's how many breakthroughs is it going to require? How much technological maturation is it going to take to take the market? All that. But this time, this time I had an answer. And so I was like, okay, it depends. And he's like, depends on what? And a few things. So first off, is it okay if it doesn't do the stuff you wanted to do like that well? Is it like a, like a little sloppy? Like it folds your laundry. It's kind of a little messy when it does it. And it's like, that's okay. I could do that. It's like, um, is it all right if it takes like two to five times longer than it would take for you to do something that it takes longer to do it? And he's like, yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm like, all right. Do you have any small pets or children or elderly folk like in your home that if like a 70 pound robot fell on them by mistake, it would like really hurt them? And he's like, no, no, I don't. I was like, oh, that's good. It's like, okay, do you have $20,000 to spend on this thing? And he's like, I'd spend that. I'm like, well, all right, we're in business. And it's like, all right, last thing. Would you be okay with it being remote operated by a guy sitting in Palo Alto and he's like, no, I'm out. I'm like, <laughs> we are talking about the one X Neo humanoid robot today. Why am I talking about this? For one, this is my field and I love to educate on this subject, but even more so because the media rollout of this robot has been a disaster. Everyone is talking about this. It has breached beyond the normal ecosystem of robotics news. And I'm not here for disaster tourism. It, it, it really, I feel like we need to add some context as to what's going on with companies like One X, what they specifically have done, and what this sort of means for the robotics field in general. Because I think this is actually a really good case study in the difference between how roboticists talk about robots and how the public receives that information and what they want. And I really hope that when you get your Neo now, we can help give you back some of that time so you can really spend it on what you feel is very meaningful to you. I'm sorry, run tidy room back for me. What did you even just do? There's a there's a gulf there. And let me get, let me get into the details though. Okay, so first off, one X Technologies released this announcement video that they're going to be selling these robots for use in your home and they will do your chores. They are the first humanoid robotics company to promise such a thing as an actual product you can buy right now, theoretically, delivered in 2026. Whether they will actually deliver in 2026, who knows? You know, there's there's all kinds of history of companies not delivering products on time, especially if they're new products, whatever. Let's put that aside for the moment, right? It's only $20,000, which again, to you might sound like a lot of money. To normal people, it sounds like a lot of money. And it is a lot of money. For a robot, a humanoid robot that's like five and a half feet tall, uh, that's that's actually pretty cheap. It's pretty cheap, folks. So it was a big media splash. They're like, hey, it's available now. And the video that they rolled out is gorgeous. It's beautiful. In addition to that, 1X decided to have a tech reporter from the Wall Street Journal come and interview the CEO and actually see the robot in action, right? Which is generally a laudable thing. A lot of robotics companies can hide behind a glossy video package and not be upfront as to how reliable the robot is. Because right now, it's a big problem. Human robots, notoriously unreliable. If you see a great YouTube video of a robot doing something awesome as humanoid, ask yourself, how many times out of 10 does it do it right, right? So they bring out a reporter to watch it live. How reliable is it? And the answer, not very. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, we're fine. And Neo had to go to urgent care. See you, Neo. On top of that, it was very clear and was said by the company, while some tasks can be done autonomously, that here, that it's being teleoperated, meaning it's being remote controlled by, in this case, it was a dude in the other room. 
and it'll even be teleoperated if you buy this thing, supposedly as a backup. If there are any chores that your Neo hasn't learned how to do autonomously, you can use expert mode to have an expert from 1X supervise the session and provide corrective intervention to help Neo complete any task. So this dude in the other room was controlling the robot. It was trying to like load the dishwasher and close the dishwasher. And it, it was just so clumsy. It was so clumsy. And this became fodder for everyone. The Daily Show had a comedy sketch about it. And it was unkind. <laughs> it was, it was, it was downright mean. Uh, you have major streamers, major YouTubers talking about it because it was like kind of like sort of the, this marketing disaster. Everyone's making fun of the robot. And I get it. I get it. But it is wild that the company thought this would go over so well when this is what the product that they had. Okay. It's so slow. It just looks pathetic. And I, and I, I mean this with all love to the robotics company. Like robotics, ro robots look dumb most of the time, unless they happen to be some, doing something amazing. So I sympathize with them, but they're also putting this out to the public. Like they thought that the public would receive this well. Uh, maybe like, did they happen to have a really bad day with the robot? I was like, like, look, bad days happen all the time in robotics. Like that's like sort of expected. Um, it really makes me feel like the company was under some kind of pressure to make this move, right? When it did not appear that the robot was impressive looking and how it went through these tasks. So the company's being blasted and I get it. I get it why, because it is clumsy. And in a way, I am glad that the public is seeing this is the state of humanoid robotics right now. I just don't want to give the impression that this robot is like shoddy work. It's not shoddy work. This is good robotics that's just not ready for market yet. You might say, well, some other company has a better robot. This other company has a better robot. Do they? Do they? At least for in your home, do they? Because say what you will about 1X Technologies. They at least allowed a reporter to take footage of their robot and interview them about the robot as it's doing their tasks. What other, what other domestic robotics companies are doing that? So behind closed doors, these other companies have something better and they're not showing it. One has reason to be skeptical, right? So I'm glad that they did this so people can see it because right now there's such a hype cycle around the apparent readiness of humanoid robots to be in your lives doing stuff. Um, you, There are all kinds of puff pieces that will show up on various news outlets about, oh, look, robots around the corner because they'll show a video of a robot doing something. And again, videos, reliable. Oh, look, that video, it played every time. Robots, relatively unreliable, unless you can prove otherwise, right? So in a way, I want to give 1X credit for being more forthcoming about their product. Like here it is, we're going to be doing teleoperation, we're probably doing it a lot, right? Okay. Um, now, can I give them full credit? I, I, I'm not sure I can because they really imply that most tasks are going to be autonomous and just some hard ones are going to be teleoperated. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that most of these things will be all autonomous because they're just not reliable enough. You might try it and be like, okay, please teleoperate it for me. But in a way, that is the point. And that's something I want to bring to the table here is that the tally operation isn't just a backup. It's the point of a lot of this, probably, probably. We don't know for sure. The way that you make a robot algorithm to pick up and do stuff in your house and do these kinds of tasks, the most promising algorithms we have are imitation-driven, human imitation-driven, that they are demonstration-based, that people will take their robot, tally operate it, to do a task, pick up the mug, pick up the mug, okay, move it there, put it down. That's a demonstration. You collect all the data, you get all the vision data, you get all of the proprioceptive data, that's like the joint angles and stuff of how it's working, right? And you record that, that's an example. Boom, get another example of another thing. Then we use machine learning, particularly deep learning, to train a neural network that stitches together all of these different examples into what we call a policy. And a policy literally is just, this is what I see, this is what I do. That's the policy. It's a, it's the algorithm, right? And you need lots of demonstrations to do that well. And I'll tell you, these methods are great at picking up lots of different tasks. It's incredible. And this is very new. This whole technique is called a diffusion policy. And it's only been two to three years. People figured this technique out and now it's everywhere. By the way, I'll point out that this technique was developed in academia with industry support, but also government funding support from National Science Foundation, also the Toyota Research Institute. So they need that data to make a better policy. Where is 1X going to get that data? From you. You are paying $20,000 to be a data farm for them, right? 
uh, they want that data to make the robot work better, so to improve the autonomy. Now, will that work? We don't really know. I mean, there's a general what we call scaling argument that, hey, more data is better. The more data that you have, theoretically, you can make, you can approximate anything if you have enough data, right? In theory, yes. In practice, different story. Now, there is this really interesting recent paper on this. One of the conclusions of this paper was that, yes, it, you do see smooth improvement as you add more data. But you have to be careful. You can only see that if you're really precise at looking at your outcomes. So will that continue to improve up to the reliability performance that we need? Again, we don't know. It's encouraging, but we don't know. So it's teleoperation isn't just a backup for when things don't work well. It's also the point that when you ask it to put your dishes away, there's some dude in Palo Alto. They said it later in the United States. I'm assuming they mean Palo Alto you know, saying, oh, okay, put the dish away like this. It's recording vision data from inside your house while and data from the robot as it's moving. And that becomes an example, a demonstration for the algorithm to learn from, right? Uh, that's part of why they're doing this, right? Uh, that's the model. So that way it can be better. So these early adopters, you're participating in that data collection. And if you're fine with that, you're fine with that. And just, just know that that's one of the points of this, right? If you buy this product, it is because you're okay with that social contract. And it even stunned me how much people hated this idea. Okay, so after all that, the robot of the future is just a creepy guy who's watching you do everything? But here's another thing that, and this comes back to how roboticists communicate to the public. And we're, always not, we're not always very good at it. I'll tell you, where we're best at it is when we have like a cool demonstration. Like, hey, look, here's a robot doing a backflip. Point the camera at the robot, put the video up on YouTube, robot does backflip. And the media goes, wow, look at that robot. Does a backflip. How so cool? It's so great. Now we've seen robots do front flips, back flips, and now side flips. What? And it is cool. It is great. How useful is it? Different story, but it's cool. It is great. We're good at that. We just let the public imagination fill in how awesome this will be in the future when it's actually useful for something, maybe. But the G1 is also raising this question. How long until they surpass us in all physical abilities? Let us know below in the comments. However, the Wall Street Journal reporter that's a good question because one of the things that the One X Neo does, frankly, pretty well, uh, is safety. Right, uh, having a robot in your house that's the size of a humanoid. This one's about sixty-six pounds, so it's actually on the lighter side. It's still pretty dangerous. It falls on things, right? And also, you have a robot gripper on that. How strong is that robot gripper? And One X did a did a great job of showing, like, look, the robot is just not strong enough to crack a walnut. That's on purpose. The idea is that the robot is not strong enough to hurt you, even if something goes wrong. That's a credit to their tendon-driven hand design, which is pretty cool. And it's also covered in this sort of like this nice mesh cloth, right? I actually, I love the look of that. I think that's great. It makes it feel really homey. It feels, it makes it feel safe. And it is softer, so it probably is a bit safer. It's not a, it's not a metal edge, right? But the Wall Street Journal reporter said like, okay, you said this robot can lift up a lot of weight, right? It's like, yeah, I can lift up 150 pounds, I believe is what they said. And which, by the way, impressive for this tiny robot and impressive that they can, they can actually sort of hoist it backward onto their, the, the, the weight onto their, onto themselves to, to, to maintain balance. That's actually a pretty tricky thing to do, a very recent development in robotics. So then reporter said, well, well, what's stopping the robot from lifting up this 150 pound object, walking over to my bed and dropping it on me while I sleep? Neo will not be able to, or allowed to, it's physically capable of, but it will not be allowed to pick up something that is that heavy. Which is kind of a weird thing to say, given that you're advertising that it can do something that it's not allowed to do, but she's not done. She has another hypothetical for him. Neo turns on the stove and throws some paper on and walks away. Can Neo do that? Will Neo do that? N Neo will not do that. Physically, can the robot do that? Yes. Physically, can a lot of products in your home do something dangerous if they decided to? Yes. We will ensure that that is not something that Neo is allowed to do. This is a hard question to answer as a roboticist because you're like, this is not going to happen. Like, why would it do that? It's like, because when you have some kind of insight on the hour, it's like, well, why would it think that that's a good idea? Um, but that's an incredibly unsettling answer to anyone who isn't a roboticist. And, and frankly, maybe the public is right to be not scared of that, but ask the question, like, how do you know? How do you know it's not going to do that? How would you be so sure that it didn't glitch out? What kind of safeguards are there to say, no, you're about to do something real bad? That's something we have to think through. You have to have good answers for, right? At the very, ideally you have a solution for it and you have good answers for it, right? But it's, but it, it was not comforting 
I, frankly, I get it. I get it. We have to have a better way of answering these questions. And two, really just saying this is how we know. The methods that we have for proving something is safe are kind of limited to very specific contexts. They're hard to apply to something as general as moving around in your home all the things that are going on, like how you can prove it's even not going to step on the dog. I mean, how do you demonstrate that when you're putting this in some customer's home? And that's one of the big things we got to reckon with. And I think that the public's starting to clue in on this, right? Now there's just this one last bit of this interview. I just, I just have to highlight it. I can't ignore it. You know, there's this new trending concept now called AI slop, right? It's a very powerful concept of, let's call it robotics slop. It's the most useful kind of slot. It is going to be not perfect, but back to like just incredibly useful. That's a disconnect. That's the golf again. That's the roboticist like, coming up with an intellectual argument for how their robot might be useful perhaps, versus how people actually respond to it, right? Why would anyone just assume that slop is okay or at least benign? Even the term itself would be off-putting to your average person. That golf is so vast. We're so not good at this, <laughs> not good at this. So he uses this phrase, robotic slop, and I worry that's gonna come back to haunt them because that really is what it looks like, right? It does look like slop, and it's no coincidence that the algorithms that we're talking about, these diffusion policies, they are structurally extremely similar to image generation neural networks. We call that stable diffusion, and they are famous for kind of weirdly approximating reality without actually understanding reality, right? Which is why it sometimes gives you nonsense. Now it's doing physical stuff in your space, in your house, right? Um, it, so, so not only is it like, is this good enough? It's slop, but is it safe enough? The slop. It's not easy. It's not easy. So a lot of this is about bridging the gap between what robotics companies are saying and how they say that and how the public receives it. But there's the other half which is what the public should ask of these robotics companies. And one thing I will say that is very heartening is that people are learning to ask better questions about these robots. Um, and by better, I mean more relevant in the near-term questions as to whether these could even possibly be useful for their world. Before you go off into sci-fi land, like will this thing conspire with a robot army to take over the world? We'll talk about robot armies maybe some other time if people are interested. Uh, but People now know to ask if the robot is teleoperated, right? This started even last year at the Tesla We Robot event when there was the teleoperation scandal, where it was implied things were autonomous when they were in fact teleoperated. I now see people on social media ask, is this teleoperated? Good, good job. If you keep learning to update your questions, you'll be in good shape. I would now ask, how reliable is it? How often does it work? Is that an unfair question to ask? No, I dare I dare say no. They should be able to give you some kind of basic statistics on how often it succeeds. Now, those numbers can be fudged. Those numbers can be difficult to get in a really objective way. And if they give you something that's like, well, we're still improving that, that tells you what you need to know. It's not ready yet, right? And you shouldn't just assume it's gonna be ready soon. But the thing I learned from this, geez, is this thing gonna drop a big piece of wood on your head? <laughs> That's a question I would never have thought to ask. Like, will it burn my house down? Will it step on my dog? How do you know? Are you sure you know? How sure are you? How are you so sure? So keep asking good questions, right? Like my friend from jury duty, right? How, how long do we have to wait before we have a robot that does all the things in our house that we want them to do so we don't have to do them? The right answer is we don't know.